Jesus, sorry, we're in fucking the abyss now. I'm sorry. It's downtown. Oh, helpful. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Alright. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So Wade's green, but I'm, uh, Mark, you go first. So you pick up a card off the deck, just draw one. If you, you have to click and drag. If you, if you click and hold on it, you pick up the whole thing. Click and drag real quick. And then right click, I think, to flip it out. That's not a, Isn't this much sexier? I'm officially making Widow's white suit since her movie's been officially announced in a month. No more 100% creative license for me. Instead of making my base belt, I bought a real military grade one off of Amazon, so it uses the proper buckle and nylon fabric she most likely have in real life. I can also take this buckle off to make it adjustable. I already fitted it to my hips and cut off the excess. Next up, since I messed up my first gun holsters with glue and made them inaccurate in general to the movie, I bought new ones, with the determination to sew everything. It comes with these gun holding elastic snaps, but they're aesthetic at this point. I kept the longer ones on the outside of my thighs for realism purposes. You'll also notice that my toy guns don't currently fit in them. We'll fix that later. Once again, these gun holsters are from Amazon. This is not sponsored. Next up is the nylon strap we'll be using. This stuff is one inch thick, thicker than my originals. To go with them are one inch buckle snaps, which will be used for her thighs. We'll focus on her holsters first. We need to make room for the thigh straps. You can use a seam ripper. As you can see, mine is obnoxious and comes with a cool magnifying glass that gets in the way of bigger projects. We'll be ripping the seams to the side of the belt clip loop so that we can send the thigh belt to it. However, my seam ripper made me mad, and this fabric is very durable, so I ended up using an exacto knife instead. Much easier, in my opinion. Just be careful, take your time, and cut away from yourself. See? We're making a rip just big enough for the strap to go through. Once I've made most of the loop, I bulge it out with a pen to make it easier for the strap to go through after taking out just a few more stitches. Push it through and there, we've got it. Now measure it around your thigh and pin it where it should go, in pants. If you fit it against your skin, you're bound to make it too tight. As you can see here, I even went as far as to put on my old Avenger suit. Just make sure you have pants on that are about as thick as you think your suit's going to be. Otherwise, fabric or even skin might pinch or not fit at all. Now, since I've tried it on, I'm moving on to putting the snap buckles on. I do this awkwardly here since I've lost my measurements, but putting the first buckle on isn't the hard part anyway. Just slip the strap through the gap in the buckle, making sure the correct side is facing out, and pin it in place ready to be sewn later. Try it on again, even if you don't lose your measurements, just to double check yourself. Measure twice, cut once. This fabric's durable, which is a blessing and a curse when you're working with it. Now 
Now we're ready for sewing. Sewing a buckle like this isn't much different from sewing a regular zipper. Just make sure it's not in the way of the needle. You also have a lot more room to work with here. Go back and forth a couple of times just to make sure it's secure on both ends. And voila! A note for this type of fabric. Even though it's strong, it likes to unweave itself very easily. When you cut it, you want a lighter nearby to melt the end so it won't unravel. Be careful not to burn yourself, and have an adult's health if you're underage. And see? Now we have a finished thigh holster! Now to connect it to the belt. We'll be slipping in another strap to hold the holster in place to the thigh, and we'll be able to slip it into our utility belt. These holsters already come in with a belt loop hanger in place, so we'll be taking advantage of that. I made sure it's nice and neat so it won't fray its way inside, but I'm still having a hard time going in. I use a pin again to open up the loop more, but that only helps so much. So then I have this conversation. Did I get safety pins? Not that I remember. No, I didn't. Because I asked and you said, no, we don't need them. I wouldn't do that. Because I always need safety pins. That's what I thought. But we were at the shop, we were like, we'll get them later. We don't need them right now. What shop were you at? Uh, Hobby Lobby. No, I wouldn't do that. That's out of character for me. <laughs> I found safety pins, freshly bought. Fast forward and I used a neat trick you can apply to a lot of tight fixes in sewing. Using a safety pin to grab that end and pull it through. Just watch. Ta-da! And now we have both our sides. It doesn't matter if the vertical belt is over or under the thigh belt, just make sure they're the same on both sides. Another side note, make sure when you apply the snap buckle to the other thigh that they mirror each other. Lots of notes. Anyway, we'll be hand sewing the very, very top and the very, very bottom of the holster to the straps. Be sure to use a strong needle and something akin to a thimble if you don't already have one. I conveniently use my band-aid here. So right under the thickest part of the stitching, not through it. You're not going to have a very good time doing that at all. You, need, you don't need to do any fancy stitching here either. Just make sure it's connected securely. Finish up the stitch however you like once you know it's not going to go anywhere. I like to not mine through its own loop in the stitching, if that makes any sense. Now to set it in place. Loop it over the belt and pull it until the thigh is where you want it to be at but make sure you still have the ability of movement. A good way of figuring out where your thigh holster should be is where it's most natural to grab your guns from. Your arms should be relaxedly straight, not stretching or bending too much for them. Her holsters are also symmetrical in this movie, so I'm keeping that in mind as well. Next up, take the belt and thighs off and take the guns away, leaving the connectors in place. Remove the adjustable buckle of the belt and slide off the connectors. Sew them just like you had the snap buckles, back and forth. After that, when you're ready to put them back onto the belt, make sure you have the correct sides on the correct sides facing out. You can see me here trying to figure it out. It's hard. But when you do ultimately figure it out before me, try everything on and test movement.
We're not just testing, though. Once we're satisfied, it's time to move on to the half why she's got going on. Now, I start out simple, but I make it a bit more complicated at the buckles later. Not much, just enough to add a bit more detail. Take some of the strap, I don't actually have it long enough right now, and connect it diagonally from beside the belt buckle to a bit above the holster. Don't let the guns cover it up. Wrap the straps around the Y and X axis enough to make it smooth against the edges, and pin it in place. It's going to be tough to stick through and sew at the buckles. I'll get into that in a moment. Repeat this on both sides. Now this is the detail I was talking about. I did the diagonal I was supposed to around the horizontal part of the belt, but I added wrapping the strap vertically around it as well. I forgot to film sewing the bottom part of the Y, but all you have to do is sew the edges on both sides and cut and burn the excess off the back. Anyway, since this is a military grade belt and I'm working on adding additional thick fabric to it, I broke a needle in my heavy duty sewing machine trying to get this done. Frustrated, I decided to glue the fabric with some strong glue. Do not do this. I removed the glue from the end product. I ended up hand sewing it, and actually my very strong friend ended up sewing it for me. Have patience here. It's worth it, trust me. Strong needles, thimbles, and patience. If you absolutely cannot sew through this fabric, don't feel bad if you do resort to glue. Just know that I was able to avoid it. There's really nothing wrong with it. I'm just a perfectionist until I get frustrated. Do what you want or need to do. New day, new outfit, almost finished product. All the stuff now is painting her famous red symbol. Now's a good chance, I think, to add that if you're confused by anything that hasn't been cleared up yet, feel free to comment your questions below. Like I typed in the beginning, this project was rather scatterbrained. I didn't think I was making White Suit Widow so soon. I was just remaking a random set of belts for her. Next thing I knew, her movie was announced, and you know the rest. Paint time. As you can see, there's already a bit of her shape in here. I'm using an airbrush, but you can use any kind of paint you want here. Just keep in mind that we're painting on metal. Painter's tape makes this easy. First though, you gotta measure out her icon. Drawing it out on paper with a straight edge is a good idea, but I trust my eye and the existing shapes here to do a good enough job. Draw what you need to, then tape off everything that you don't want to paint. Another suggestion. When working with sharp edges, cutting the tape rather than gripping it can prove easier when you're making your initial shapes. It's incredibly important that this is symmetrical, so unbuckling the buckles and putting them against one another is a good idea. My partner points out at first that they aren't even, so I go back in and fix this. My symbol's also going to end up a little bit more round in the center due to the shape of the buckle, but I fix that as well. Keep taping every little part that you don't want to be red. Next, I take some gift wrap and wrap it around the fabric of the belt to keep it safe from my onslaught of paint.
Here's my airbrush. The reason I'm using an airbrush is because it'll evenly distribute the paint I'm using and make it harder to chip, while also only covering a small area, unlike spray paint. I'm using regular acrylic paint, but I prep it with thinner, in my novice case, water, for the project. I'll be using a finisher for this as well. I test out my gun a few times before spraying the buckle. It might not look like much, but we're going from straight black to bright red. It'll take some coats. So have some patience and just keep spraying. Do as many coats as you need, letting them fully dry in between. Apply a light finisher. In my case, I use Anglis number 600 acrylic finisher. Wait 24 hours and ta-da! Remember this from earlier? Well, now we've made it. And boy, if I didn't need these things, I'd burn them for all they've wrought. Either way, I'm super glad they're finished and I'm happy with how they turned out. What do you think? Any tips on how to improve them in the future? I'm still wondering if I want to add bags or not. Any updates, I'll post in the future. By the way, this dress, not just a sexy look, but a very near future cosplay that was comfy and convenient for showing off and trying on this project. Subscribe, like, comment, bell, follow, do all the things. There is more to come. Thanks so much for watching everybody, and until next time, I'll see you later, bye!